Hello everyone. I hope all of you are ready to learn something new today. Therefore, I have brought to you this morning tales video. So today we are going to discuss certain current affairs which can help you in learn uh, something new. So let's begin. Guys, this is the schedule of live classes for RBS, Abhi and Nabad. And this is our mobile application which you can download from the Google Play Store. And these are some of the features that we offer on the mobile. Guys, here are the ways through which you can approach us in case you have any kind of uh, issue in your preparation or you need any kind of guidance for your examination. So let's quickly begin with the first question. Recently, Union Minister Jitendra Singh has launched an integrated portal for ensuring ease of living for the central government pensioners. Which bank has co-developed the portal with the ministry? So it is a very, very important question, guys. So, which bank has co-developed this pension portal? So, it is State Bank of India, the largest bank of India. Okay, so it has partnered with the pension ministry, the Ministry of Personal Public Grievances and Pension. And both of them have developed this new portal, which is uh, in its URL, seems like this, www.ipension.nic.it. So, NIC is National Information uh, Center, which develops majority of the IT application for the government departments, be it at the state or at the center level. Okay? So, NIC is, is easy for you to remember. Now, I pension is integrated pension. Now, there would be a question in your mind whether you have to remember the URL also. So, guys, sometimes the URL are also asked. Okay? So, I remember there was a question in RBI examination only where the URL of a very new portal was asked in the examination. So why do you need to leave even one mark when you know that this can be asked in the examination, right? So this portal ka URL hai, which you need to remember and I hope that it is very easy to remember for all of you. You just need to remember I pension for integrated pension, okay? So what do we mean by integrated pension now? So integrated pension portal. Basically, it is going to provide all kinds of services related to the pension on one portal that is this, okay? Apart from this, there is nothing uh, to be discussed here with regards to this portal, okay? Obviously, we have many other portals in this news only, but this portal has this much information only. Now, one more thing that pension related information will be provided for the central government pensioners, right? So, this much is important. Now guys, Bhavishya 9.0 version was also launched. So Bhavishya portals, portal was already uh, in practice under implementation by the Ministry of Personal, Public Grievances and Pension. And now this portal's 9.0 version has been launched. So many a times you have heard of new versions of the applications being launched. So what is the meaning of that? Version launch hone ka matlab hai that the app has been updated, okay? So some new features or maybe the user interface of the application has been improved. So if any improvisation is there in the portal, then the government terms it as a new version of the portal, okay? So this is a very basic thing. There is nothing much complex to the version. So you just need to remember that right now the 9.0 version of the Bhavishya portal is under implementation, okay? Now this portal was launched in 2017, so it is uh, it is effective from January 1st to 20, 1st 2017, okay? And the basic purpose of this Bhavishya portal is to uh, pay the pension and track the system, okay? So track the pension payments, how many pension payment has been done and what is the due for the pensioners. Now, it is being integrated with the Pension Seva portal of the SBI so that all the services can be provided at one place. Okay? So, after the integration of the Pension Seva portal of SBI and the Bhavishya 9.0, the services provided by the SBI and the Bhavishya portal will be integrated and all the information will be provided on one single page, one single website. There is one more portal related to the pensions only. So it is Anubhav portal, which is again launched by the Department of Pension and Pensions Pensioners Welfare in 2015. 
and it basically provides the opportunity to the central government and the state government employees to share their experience. Anubhav means experience. So this portal uh, is providing the space to these pensioners to provide their experience at their jobs so that the new people can learn from them. So that's all about it. Question number two is, recently, Union Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, Hardeep Singh Puri, inaugurated Asia's largest compressed biogas plant in uh, Lehra okay. Gaga in Punjab's Sangrur. This plant has been developed with the financial assistance of Verbio AG, which is a leading bioenergy company in Dash. So here, the right answer is Germany. Okay. So guys, you must have heard about this Asia's largest compressed biogas plant being developed in Punjab's Sangru district. But right now, its inauguration has been done. Okay. So that is the news. And apart from the location of the plant, as well as the company which is sponsoring the plant, you need not to remember anything else. Okay. So first is Punjab's Sangru district and district would suffice. You don't have to uh, remember the exact location. Okay. So that will also be uh, fine uh, as far as this news is concerned. The next point is that this company of Germany, Verbio AG, has provided rupees 220 crores for the establishment of this Asia's largest compressed biogas plant. Okay. This much is enough. Question number three is, Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi has started the distribution of PMJAY MA Yojana Ayushman cards in Gujarat. Mukhya Mantri Amrutam scheme was launched to shield poor citizens from huge cost of medical treatment and illnesses. When was the scheme launched? So basically, let me first give you the answer of this question. The scheme was launched in 2012. Now what has happened? First of all, understand this point that, that Mukhya Mantri Amrutam scheme was launched in 2012 and this, uh, this scheme stands for Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana which is your Ayushman Bharat scheme plus your Mukhya Mantri Amrutam Yojana. So this is the combined scheme. The central scheme of Ayushman Bharat has been combined with the state scheme of uh, Mukhya Mantri Amrutam. Okay. Now, the Prime Minister has not launched this scheme as of now. It is just that he has inaugurated the distribution of the Ayushman cards for this year probably because the Ayushman cards were also being distributed earlier. But right now, because the Prime Minister visited Gujarat, so he just inaugurated the launching of the new Ayushman cards. Apart from this, nothing new has happened with regards to this scheme. I hope you are understanding. Now, Let's discuss some more facts about this scheme. So I hope you are aware of this scheme because this was already there in news some months back. So I had discussed about it, but I'm sure that you must have forgotten about it. So let's discuss it again. Mukhya Mantri Amrutan. So this scheme was launched in 2012 and the basic purpose of this scheme is to provide the financial assistance to the poor families so that they do not have to bear the burden of high medical cost and we all know that the out-of-pocket expenditure in India, especially in the health sector, is very high and the burden is on the poor people because the upper middle class and the rich people do not have that much problem in accessing the tertiary sector healthcare facilities as the poor people face. Okay, and because of that, they are not able to get the treatment of many of the chronic and complex diseases like cancer. Cancer ka treatment available hai, but today bhi bohat sare poor log cancer ki wajay se mar jate. So that is the very stark truth, but that is the truth and that is because of the high cost. So in order to uh, prevent something like that from happening, Gujarat government has launched this Mukhya Mantri Amutam scheme in 2012 to provide the financial assistance to the poor people in terms of uh, the benefits, okay, like under the Ayushman Bharat scheme is provided. Now, in 2014, the Mukhya Mantri Ayushman, uh, sorry, Amrutam Yojana was extended to cover the families which have an annual limit of annual income of rupees 4 lakhs, okay. Then, its name was changed 
व मुख्यमंत्री अमृतम टू मुख्यमंत्री अमृतम वात्सल्य योजना ओके सो दैट्स द न्यू नेम ऑफ दिस स्कीम देन वॉट है then came the ayushman bharat scheme and when the ayushman bharat scheme was launched the state government merged its state team mukhya mantri amritam vatsalya scheme with the ayushman bharat scheme and thus we have the combined scheme which is pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana mukhya mantri amritam scheme and the cards under these schemes are provided so basically the beneficiaries of both the schemes are getting the benefits under this one single umbrella scheme okay that is it now let's move on to the question number 4 what is the venue of the 14th edition of the world spice congress so here the world spice congress is going to be uh, organized in mumbai by the spice board of india okay now the spice board of india comes under the ministry of commerce and industry and this is a very general fact you should all be aware of it ओके, सो मुंबई में ऑर्गेनाइज होगी फेब्रुवरी 16 टू 18 नेक्स्ट ईयर 2023 में ऑर्गेनाइज की जाएगी एंड इट वुड बी द फोर्टीन एडिशन ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड स्पाइस कांग्रेस वन मोर थिंग दैट द कांग्रेस वुड हैव अ थीम एंड द थीम वुड बी विजन 2030 थर्टी स्पाइसेज सस्टेनेबिलिटी प्रोडक्टिविटी इनोवेशन कोलेबोरेशन एक्सीलेंस एंड सेफ्टी सो दिस इज दी यू कैन से बैक्रोनेम ऑफ Spices. Okay, from the spices word, we have created the different different words. Okay, sustainability, productivity, innovation, collaboration, excellence, and safety. And this is the the theme of this World Spice Congress. So do remember this much. Now, in terms of spices production, what is India's current position in the world market? This is your question. Do tell me. I'm talking about the spices global production, not the exports. Now, if you really want to answer me regarding the exports, then you are welcome. You can also provide me the answer that uh, at what position does India stand as far as the spices exports are concerned in the international market? Okay, so question number fifth. the questions language is a bit lengthy but such type of questions are asked in the rbi sabi and abad examination that's why the question has been created keeping in mind the pattern of the exam okay so the question is recently india and france have been reelected as president and co president of the international solar alliance at the fifth general assembly of the body in new delhi the iis assembly approved the solar facility a payment guarantee mechanism which is expected to stimulate investments into solar projects this facility will crowd source investments from various donors across the globe and proposed projects in africa will be able to uh, purchase payment guarantees or partial insurance premium from these funds so the facility is divided into how many components so the facility is divided into two components so i know that the question is getting a bit complex here you don't have to worry about it i am going to discuss each and every step uh, each and every development step by step okay so first of all what has happened the basic news is that the fifth uh, general assembly of the international solar alliance took place in new delhi there india and france have been reelected as the president and co president of the iis okay so i hope all of you are aware that international solar alliance was initially also created by india in collaboration with france so it is the it is the uh, you can say brain child of india and france so it was in collaboration uh, with both of these countries now one more thing that isa is india's first treaty based international organization okay so the countries have to sign the treaty to become a part of the isa now what has happened fifth assembly has been conducted and during that assembly various initiatives were launched because the isa aims to mobilize 1 trillion dollars into solar projects by the year 2030 and this is a very very important target do remember by 2030 1 trillion dollar in the solar projects that's the basic idea theek hai so india is going to host a high level conference on new technologies for clean energy transition transition on 19th october 
at the hotel ashok chanakpuri in new delhi that's an all together different statement but we are talking about the solar energy that's why it is important for you to know that which important conferences in india are going to host in the coming future okay so it is this conference now let's discuss about the developments that took place during the fifth general assembly of the iis so very first thing is that the solar facility has been launched now what is the solar facility it is basically a payment guarantee mechanism okay so that the investment can be boosted because why would you invest in a project until or unless you are assured of the return okay return bhi chahiye ya to fir agar aap loan dete hain so you need the principal plus the interest okay so if you are assured of getting principal plus interest in case of loan or if you are assured of the yield or return in case of investment only then you move ahead and provide the funding so that is the similar case with the investors so in order to provide the assurance to the investor the solar facility has been launched which is basically a payment guarantee mechanism okay so it has two components first is solar payment guarantee fund and next is solar insurance fund now this facility will basically crowd source investment from various donors across the globe and uh it will invest in the proposed projects in africa because africa is the continent where all the countries would come under the tropical region all the three tropics cross africa so it will be able uh the proposed projects in africa will be able to purchase payment guarantees or partial insurance premium for these funds okay so payment guarantees can be uh availed from these funds as well as insurance against the proposed project can also be availed so that the project can be safeguarded against any kind of calamities okay suppose there is an earthquake and the entire project which was built with a uh, you can say a good amount and a lot of energy and time and that project is destroyed so against that destruction we need to have an insurance so that insurance would be provided under the solar facility of the in, uh, international solar alliance so that's the basic idea i hope you are getting my point now the next development is solar x grand challenge so it is basically a hackathon very uh, many hackathons are organized by the government at different levels in different ministries so similar in this hackathon which basically invites the researchers and innovators across the globe to innovate technologies uh, that can help in uh, wide spreading the use of solar energy okay and also we can set up more and more power plants efficiently so that's the basic idea to invite more and more startups and researchers so that they develop the new technology that's the basic idea of solar and x grand challenge now guys how many members are there of isa so if you talk about the member countries the countries who have signed and ratified the isa framework then we have 90 countries if you talk about the signatory countries which have signed the treaty then we have 110 countries okay question number 6 is what is the total corpus of the accelerator fund launched by the union minister for agriculture and farmer welfare narendra singh tomar for the agri start so here again this is a very very important question because the ministry has talked about creating a new division for the startups only within the ministry so that is why it is a very important news do listen to me carefully now first of all what is the corpus of the fund the corpus is 500 crores okay so accelerator fund what is an accelerator fund which basically helps the startups in scaling up their product okay in making their product reach the market okay that's the basic idea so 500 crore is the total corpus of this accelerator fund which will focus on the agri startups and at present there are approximately 2000 agri startups operating in india and more than that approximately okay so this accelerator fund was launched at the agri startup conference in new delhi this is important fact do remember now apart from this the ministry of agriculture has also announced to create a network now what kind of network this network will be headed by the agriculture ministry it will support the agriculture startups 
for overall planning of their products okay a steering committee will also be set up under the chairmanship of the agriculture ministry for implementing the network for the execution of this network so that's the announcement that the minister has made one more announcement that an executive committee under the secretary of agriculture and under the secretary of another department of ministry of agriculture that is department of agriculture research and education to take decision on the issues related to the agri startup so that is another important development one and last development is that the ministry has announced to create a separate division within itself for the startups only okay so that's a very important thing and the division will be headed by the joint secretary of the ministry so that is also important but which joint secretary will head this division that will also be known when the department will be created okay because usually in a ministry there are many joint secretaries so who is exactly going to head that division that will come into effect when the division will be created okay so the question number 7 is what is india's score in the global pension index survey 2022 so here 44.4 or triple four is india's score okay global pension index survey has been released by three organization majorly it is known as the mersa global pension index so but in fact it is released by mersa cfa institute and monash center for financial studies now the total countries which were assessed uh, the number of total countries is 44 and these 44 countries population is equivalent to 65% of the world's total population then the toppers which country have country has topped this index it is iceland followed by netherland and thailand at the third position thailand actually is not at the third position it is written by uh, mistakenly here i will rectify it in the final pdf don't worry about it but it is iceland and netherland was thailand is at the bottom of this index now as far as india's score and rank is concerned so india's rank is 41st and score is 44.4 india's score parameter wise in adequacy parameter india's score is 37.6 sustainability may india's score is 40.7 and integrity may india's score has 60.4 bottom pe we have thailand parameters we have already known uh, and portugal guys is the new entry in this index so what is the lesson or what is the you can say conceptual understanding that we are taking from this index the understanding is that out of 44 countries india's rank is 41st and you can yourself judge what kind of ranking is this okay it is not a very good ranking especially when the total fertility rate in india is Two that is below below the replacement re, uh, level, and uh, approximately around twenty forty, India will have majority, or I would say not the majority of its population would be the senior citizens, but a significant portion of our uh, population would be of senior citizens. So it is very important that the government should focus on the silver economy. Silver economy is the concept. that talks about the products and everything that is designed keeping in mind the needs of the older people okay so it is high time that we should create products for the senior citizens and before creating the products we should ensure that they have a sustainable supply of income and resources at their age old age when they are not able to earn and do the hard work okay so that is the lesson that we need to take now can any one of you suggest me certain measures through which the pension excess can be increased in india this is your question do uh, tell me in the comment section question number 8 is with which company has irctc collaborated to provide travel now pay later payment option on its travel app irctc rail connect so it is cash e a very basic news it is travel now pay later this is the facility like we have buy now pay later facility on many of the channels uh, merchant channels this is the travel now pay later facility that irctc has 
launched with the Cashi, which is a fintech platform. Question number nine is who has been appointed as the 27th controller general of accounts? So here, Bharti Das is the right answer. Question number 10 is, who has been elected as the new president of the Congress party? So here, Malika Arjun Kharge is the new president of the Congress party. As far as the BJP is concerned, JP Nadda is the president of the party. Okay. Uh, and for RSS, it is Mohan Bhagwat who is the president of the party. And uh, one more thing that you should also be aware of the leaders in the Lok Sabha Okay, leader of the house and leader of opposition. So in the Lok Sabha, we do not have any leader of opposition because no party had won the, a significant amount of votes okay, to be classified as an opposition. Now the leader of house in the Lok Sabha is Narendra Modi himself, okay, because he is the prime minister. This is Malika Arjun Khargi. So here guys, this video ends. I hope you have enjoyed the content. If you have anything to discuss with me or anything that you need to provide it in the comment uh, that you need to discuss, you can provide it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video.